Hey there, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. My name is Mike Fox, and I am a marketing specialist here at Revenue Well. Our goal here at Revenue Well is to help dental practices succeed. And we've built a service that we think helps in a lot of ways, but we also recognize that there's a lot more that goes into making a dental practice actually successful. So we decided to start the Practice Perfect series as a way of providing insight from the industry's top professionals back to you, our customers. Every month we offer free presentations from industry leaders to give you actionable tools, strategies, and techniques that you can use to improve your practice. If you've got to leave early, or if you missed any part of this presentation today, fret not, we will be sending out a copy of this broadcast to everybody who registered. Uh, we're also going to have a short Q&A at the end of the presentation, so if you have any questions, go ahead and send them over through the box on the right-hand side of the screen, and we'll address it at the end. Uh, we've got a fantastic presentation for you today. Revenue Well's own marketing director, Steve Cecina, is kicking off the broadcast with a brief overview of how your front office can save money by going paperless, and Wendy Alderman of Forever Green Consulting will be educating us on how the back office can save. Uh, if you're not familiar with Wendy or Forever Green, Wendy started off as a dental assistant and front office manager. From that, she found that she excelled in implementing efficient processes and organizing offices. Her expertise is helping dental practices go chartless as the dental industry continues shifting towards paperless offices. Wendy has been an ADOM member since 2015, the secretary of her local ADOM chapter since 2016, and a member of the Murado Speakers and Consultants since 2017. With that, I'm going to hand it off to Steve here for our, another quick introduction. Hello, everyone, and um, I'll give you, a, this is Steve Cecina. I'll give you a quick introduction of myself before we get into the preface um, and um, the main event and Wendy's presentation. I'm Director of Marketing here at Revenue Well. Just coming up on my one-year anniversary, started in May of last year with prior experience in both engineering, um, telecom, IT, and then I made a transition into online retail. So I've got some good background um, in customer experience and user experience that um, I will bring to the table here today. Day, yeah, um, some certifications and background, but I think my tagline, engineer by education, marketer by choice, um, will come across in the presentation. So, as I mentioned, um, we'll move on to the next slide um, and talk about the paperless imperative. Um, before I turn the stage over to our featured presenter, um, I'd like to start out today, briefly set the stage for the discussion that will follow for the next hour or so. Um, and I'll start with a story. Early in my career, a young engineer working in the telecommunications industry and responsible for introducing a new high-speed data communication system. Um, it seems difficult to think about it now, but 25 years ago, we didn't have the internet, fax machines took three minutes a page, and we really didn't have the ability to communicate data and information quickly. Healthcare with its reliance on patient charts and information and having to move data from site to site. It was one of my core target markets. And we thought there would be a tremendous savings to the doctors to be able to use this fancy high-speed network to send files between offices, um, their office themselves, as well as hospital and elsewhere. To this day, I still recall the doctor sitting on the other side of the table when I was doing some market research. I interviewed him to introduce this amazing new technology and the response was, why would I ever want to do that? I can just have my staff copy the records and then send them by courier. Well, it took us 25 years, but electronic medical records are here to stay. Benefits of going paperless are well documented. Um, you've seen the title of the webinar, Save $10,000 a Year by Going Paperless. Yeah, so we assume you all have some sort of interest or professional interest in, um, in the topic. The transition of not only dentistry, but really all industries, has been an inexorable march toward the reduction in paper in the office. At Revenue Well, we're constantly innovating around how to leverage dental paperless technologies to help dentists build more connected relationships between their patients and communities. As we continue to research ways to achieve that goal, we've uncovered some interesting data and trends. And I think they play nicely into the story that Wendy will, um, will present to us later on in the hour. Um, so before we get into that, I'm gonna share some of the information that we found um, which I hope will be interesting and enlightening. So we move on to the next slide. There's a lot of research and a lot of discussion around the need to go paperless. 
how that plays into building better doctor patient or patient practice relationships. That research falls under four broad categories as we found, you know, or four mega trends as it were impacting the dental industry. For purposes of today, we'll discuss them in relationship to the paperless office, but I think you'll be able to see how they apply not only to um, paperwork, but a broader context as well. Removing the paper will help, for example, with our first trend, patient satisfaction, tremendous number of other aspects that will address patient satisfaction as well. So consider that in the context of the discussion as a starting point, um, not the last word. So the four trends, obviously, are patient satisfaction imperative, the rise in the empowered consumer, the digitization of everything, and the importance of user experience. We uncovered a lot of this underlying data as we were putting together data research for a new product, Revenue Well Forms, set of online forms for patient intake, health history, treatment plan acceptance. But don't worry, I'm not gonna sneak in a sales presentation um, here today. Just wanna set the context for how we came across this data and why we felt it was important to help better understand the, um, the paperless imperative that we'll talk about today. So let's start with patient satisfaction, that first megatrend. And I start somewhat ironically with um, a, a paperless discussion with the most hated piece of paper in the, um, in, this, in the country today. Given that we're only two weeks past tax day, the income tax form is still top of mind for all of us. And I think it represents the average consumer's dissatisfaction with paperwork in general. Not only the drudgery of filling out this form every year on April 15th, but the notion that you have to save receipts and pay stubs and investment records and expenses and everything that you're gonna to need to complete the form. And yes, we've been moving more toward a digitized system, but taxes still represent that, um, that flashpoint of forms and paper that people just hate in general. And therefore, it becomes a good um, starting off point for discussion of the paperless office. If we want a little lighter example, um, I can pull out, and, and I recently saw a, a, um, a contest that Adobe ran, and they played off the NCAA basketball tournament and came up with a bracket of their own called the Ultimate Form Rage Tournament. 16 different paper-related activities across workplace, various applications, legal, and uh, most importantly in our industry for dentistry, family affairs, where health history took the number one seed and insurance the number two seed. Of course, taxes won overall, yeah, but um, two very common dental practice activities contribute to that, um, that, um, that form rage that exists throughout, um, throughout people's lives. So let's get into the details of those four trends. The next slide, please. The West Monroe Partners um, and, and recently did a study um, of more than 2,000 dental patients. Patient uh, survey called Improving the Dental Patient Experience. The report shows that payers and providers are playing catch up as we compare to a, um, more customer related or service related industries such as retail or banking or insurance or finance. Those retail experiences are reshaping consumer expectations for all types of businesses in which they interact. They measure practice promote net promoter score. And I'll touch briefly, if you don't understand details of NPS, you've no doubt seen the signature question, would you recommend your dentist to a friend or colleague looking for dental services? The one to 10 scale separates consumers into promoters, passives or detractors, and then does some math to come up with a single numerical score. That numerical score is represented on a minus 100 to plus 100 scale. Dentistry, as it turns out, rated not so, not so good on the scale with a net promoter score of one. If we compare that to insurance, providers averaged a score of 36, investment firms averaged 45, and department and specialty retail averaged 58. Now we start out with a fair number of consumers whose attitude toward the dentist ranges from fear to dislike. And we realize that to achieve customer satisfaction, we've got some work to do. And if there's any one thing that will, there's no one thing that will transform this audience. We have to consider each and every element um, as one more opportunity to improve the um, performance. So whether it's eliminating forms, eliminating paperwork in the patient experience. But the other one I thought was kind of interesting is a study that we came across from Purdue University, which said the mere presence of an aquarium in a waiting room will lead to a 12% reduction in stress, another way to improve patient satisfaction. Now let's take a look at trend number two, which is the role of rising consumer power. Um, 
I'm always amused by the chart pictured here, which was put together by my friend Lori Wisdell, Forrester Research. And it depicts that Byzantine um, approach or journey that shoppers go through as they're making decisions. Um, and it applies to both uh, large considered purchase and even smaller decisions they make. You know, we start in one that I think everybody has near universal um, understanding is the car buying experience. Years ago, people hated car shopping. The dealer had all the power. You walked into the dealership, you had to talk to a salesperson to understand the features, what colors are available, how much the car costs, what kind of discounts were available. Now we've created an environment where we can go online, we can understand all of the information. It's freely available from invoice costs to full features. The consumer walks into the dealer now, probably knowing more about the car they want to buy than the dealer himself or herself. Today's and, and it's a demonstration that today's consumers have greater choice and greater freedom to impact how they make choices for everything that they buy in their, their lives today. Um, if we think about the choice for making a, a new dental um, decision, they're gonna do a ton of research. They're gonna go out, they're gonna talk to their friends, they're gonna look up reviews and ratings online. They're gonna research um, reports and data that's available, um, recovery rates and pain levels and everything that you might do if you were researching, researching a car purchase out in line before you walked into the dealer. This concept of a self-directed buyer's journey, that is a consumer that's out there that has the power, the knowledge, and the ability to go out and understand your practice before they move in, the customer is in control every step of the way. Third, and I think most people already understand these trends, is that virtually every aspect of your patient's lives is being digitized as we speak. We found one of the last major non-digitized elements of the dental practice tends to be those patient intake forms. And the um, march to online forms is taking place just as the transition from vinyl albums to MT3s or books to Kindle or telephone directories to looking up businesses on Google, everything is becoming digitized. And unlike record albums where hipsters are taking over and bringing back a renaissance of vinyl, I don't think we're gonna see the same thing with paper forms. Once we go online, there's no looking back. So the last trend I want to touch on is the importance of a user, a good, strong user experience um, and the interplay between the consumer power and the digitization of everything really comes into play in the, the point where consumers talk to your practice, whether it's on the phone, online, other forms of communication. Um, and it's one more driver we found influencing the migration to a more paperless environment. Um, and I think the most impactful stat we came across was a consulting firm called The Manifest that surveyed 502 users of forms, part of a 2018 user experience form survey. Fully 84% of people preferred to fill out forms online as compared to 13% um, by mail, in person, or via paper, or 3% via mobile device. Now, I wanted to take this one step deeper to try and understand why there's such a big gap, because 84% is a not just a majority, it's a substantial majority, and came across additional research, a user experience consultant out of the UK, Sophie Rewater, um, and she put forth that it's nothing more difficult to understand than people just hate the time it takes to fill out a paper form. There's a lot of um, going online, downloading, printing, writing, um, assembling, stapling. There's just a lot of work. And online forms are significantly easier to complete. Online is easier and therefore preferred. So not only do we achieve better customer satisfaction, but we're one tiny step on the way to the goal of this webinar, which is to save $10,000 a year by eliminating paper. So that's the end of the um, the overview. I'm going to hand this um, back to Mike. Excellent. Thank you, Steve. That was fantastic. Uh, with that, it is my great pleasure to introduce to you Wendy Alderman. Uh, Wendy, take us away. Hi there. I am Wendy Alderman. I am Forever Green Consulting. I'm just going to tell you a little bit about myself. I grew up terrified of the dentist, and like most people, it stemmed from a very young age. 
Subconsciously, the fear never really left me until I was about 16 after finding a dentist that was caring and that would listen. That office is the reason why I do what I do today. They were able to talk through my fears and help me overcome. I started out as a dental assistant going to a vocational school. Then, like many, the receptionist position just kind of fell in my lap and I just couldn't say no. The office manager at that office had a career change and I filled in her shoes. I definitely wasn't ready to be an office manager at first, but I worked up to it. I read a lot, and I mean a lot of books, listened to podcasts. I really worked on improving myself to be the best office manager I could be. I was able to transition my then office to a paperless office and found out that there weren't a ton of resources to be able to help me within this transition. So I decided to be that resource for other people. I now have eight years in the dental field and I tried to recruit everyone, even the people who were scared of the dentist to work for a dentist. I really would like to take everyone who says I hate the dentist and transform their thinking to be more positive. And I really believe that this starts with the first phone call and the first visit. Today, we're gonna to talk about the patient's first visit and how it can be totally changed by making processes easier, uh, by going chartless, being more organized and being more efficient. What does your office say to patients? So imagine this, Sally is a new patient. She walks in the dental office for the very first time. She walks up to the receptionist who's on the phone with the patient. The receptionist is very short with the person on the, on the other end of the phone. She's frantically looking at all of the papers on her desk. Her desk is just a complete mess, pens and papers everywhere. Just looking for the right paper, she's extremely distraught. She finally tells the person on the other end of the phone, I don't know, you're just gonna have to call your insurance company, I can't help you with this, and just hangs up. Sally says, hello, my name is Sally Jones. Am I in the right office? I'm looking for Dr. Smith. The receptionist says, what time is your appointment? Obviously in a sassy tone. <laughs> Sally says, my phone call reminder yesterday says 2 p.m. The receptionist hands Sally the clipboard and says, fill this out. Sally hesitantly says, may I have a, a pen, please? I don't mean to bother. Sally sits down with her pen and her paperwork and she fills out the top sheet. She heads back to the front desk and she hands the paperwork over. The receptionist checks to make sure that everything is filled out and notices that the backside isn't filled out. She flips it over and hands it back and says, there's a second, uh, a second side and a second sheet. Again, Sally takes the paperwork back to her seat and continues to fill it out. The assistant comes up to the receptionist and says, where's Sally? Have you called her yet? Why is she late? Sally hears and sees everything around her. She's very aware and very attentive. She's never like the dentist. It always seems like the staff is rushed and her teeth are always broken. She can never schedule easily. It's just never a positive experience. Does this really sound like an office that you want to go to? Doesn't sound like an office that I want to go to. Make sure that you're empathetic when your new patients come in for the first time. Now, let's imagine a chartless or a paperless office, same situation. The receptionist is on the phone with a patient about billing. The receptionist says on the phone, Julie, let me look into this bill a bit further. Do you mind if I call you back before the end of the day? Okay, great, talk to you soon. The receptionist hangs up the phone and says, hi, are you my new patient, Sally? Sally, of course, says yes. Perfect, thanks so much for filling out your paperwork online. If I can get a copy of your driver's license or your state ID. She looks through her purse to find her ID. She hands it over. Here you go. Thank you. I'll let the assistant Lisa know that you're here and she'll bring you back shortly. Please help yourself to a beverage if you'd like. The patient sits down and thinks, this office is really organized. They know what they're doing. I hope that the rest of the visit goes this well. I guess going to the dentist maybe isn't that bad. Now Lisa, the assistant, doesn't have to keep checking her watch, getting stressed out because she's still because Sally's still filling out her paperwork. The receptionist is obviously aware that the new patient is coming in because she's taking great notes over the phone, which the notes are in the computer rather than in the chart because typically the chart's in the back at this point. And the check-in time is so much faster and so much easier. 
being a paperless or chartless office can simply be faster just because of the organization that's been put into place ahead of time. So really the difference is your choice. Either you can be the, the office or the desk that looks like the side, the left side or the right side. What side do you think that patients would like to see? When patients see that you're organized, this appears clean to them, which in turn will help them to refer their friends and their, friend, their family to your office. And who doesn't want more new patients, especially referred by patients? When you have paper everywhere, it looks messy. Maybe even the patient thinks that your office is dirty and they're gonna assume that you're unorganized because of all the paper. I always try to think like a patient would. Would they like to see all papers all over the place and names on the papers? No, they're gonna assume that, your, that their name is gonna be on your desk for everyone to see as well. Offices aren't usually too large not, be, not to be able to greet a new patient by the first name when they walk in. Usually software, you can add the age of a patient in addition to taking a photo of them. So if you have four patients that come in at the same hour, two males, two females, completely different ages, you're definitely gonna be able to greet them by first name. This helps the patient to feel more confident that you know what you're doing and so will the rest of the staff. When you walk into a medical office and you walk up to the receptionist and the window is closed, she makes you wait till she gets off the phone, says, what time is your appointment? Give me your ID, give me your insurance card. That does not make you feel loved and it does not make you feel excited to come to the dentist. This is the part that I love about working in a dental office. We can be so much friendlier and less sterile feeling and sounding than a medical office. Now let's start talking saving money. I'm sure that this is the reason why everyone has tuned in to see how they can save their office $10,000. I've done some research and so th this is the basically the basics of it. If you have an office that sees 35 new patients a month, that is 420 new patients in the year. You have two hygienists working four days a week. That's a little over 3,000 patients a year if your hygiene visits are one hour long. This, is, this equates to over 1,000 mounts of bite wing mounts and FMS mounts. That's almost 14,000 individual films per year. That's crazy to think about 14,000 films that you take every year. An average in an office spends about three hours filing charts, searching for charts, searching again for more charts that they couldn't find originally. And that is about an equivalent of 156 hours per year. My, my new favorite saying is pulling charts is like pulling teeth. Nobody really wants to do it. <laughs> So in terms of money, all of those 14,000 x-rays is equivalent to about $4,200. Those 1,000 mounts is equivalent to $2,400. The charts for all those 420 patients is $1,000. The solution cost for the fixer and developer is about $800. The time finding charts with someone that gets paid $15 an hour is $2,300, and obviously you're gonna have some duplicating costs, so about $300. So this realistically, this is actually over $10,000 a year. It's 11,000, but obviously it's gonna fluctuate a little bit between each office. Now, what are you gonna do with that extra $11,000? You can spend your money on technology, office improvements, raises, bonuses, vacations, marketing for new patients, which in turn is more new, is, is more savings. This paperless documents, I know that everyone has a fear of the paperless documents. There are so many resources out there that it, this, is, this is why I'm here for you. This is why Forever Green is here for you, to be able to help you with these paperless documents, to be able to find out which solution is best for you. And um, I know that Revenue Well just launched their paperless documents just a few weeks ago. And there's many other, many other places that you can find paperless documents. If you get an, a tablet, an iPad, a laptop, an extra computer at the front, or even a Topaz signature, there's a lot of Eaglesoft and Dentrix and um, other 
other areas within your software that there's actually paperless documents inside of some of your software as well. I do have a three-year plan for going greener, saving money and saving the earth with drawing new, more new patients in. So year one is obviously um, transitioning to paperless so you can get that initial savings. Year two is going green, being more efficient while going green. And year three is marketing to bring in more new patients and again, save you more money in the long run. So my year two, these are all of the things that you can do um, to be greener and be more efficient. So you can use towels instead of paper towels in the restroom and um, in other places in your office. You can use a reusable patient bib, so just a cloth bib that you can launder. Reusable headrest covers, autoclavable pouches, bamboo and recycled plastic toothbrushes. This is more just on the going green side, but the patients see it and they notice it. They see that, you're, that you care paper patient bags. As far as I'm aware, there are no biodegradable bags. They tried to make that a few years ago, but I guess they were disintegrating a little too quickly. So the next best thing is a paper patient bag. If you have coffee mugs instead of disposable um, foam cups in the waiting room, if your coffee mugs have your logo on it, this is one more marketing tool for you. And when patients ask if they can take a disposable cup home and you tell them, no, that, that, that regular ceramic coffee mug is for you, they just love it. They think it's worth like $1,000 or something. It's, it's just crazy to see the, the reaction on their face when you tell them that they can take this coffee mug home for coffee mug home with them. And then in addition, when the coffee mug is at home, if they have somebody over, they see it, that's extra marketing for you. Having a water distiller in your office can help save so you don't have to run to the store and pick up the water bottles. Um, the plastic is not being recycled because it's just a water distiller for your office. Um, with the washer and dryer, obviously you can wash the, the patient bibs, the headrest covers, um, the towels, and your, your scrubs as well. And you can also save that water from the washer and reuse it into your sprinkler system. You can hire a part-time rover for your busy hours or your busy days to be more efficient and be able to see more patients. You can have solar panels on your roof, reuse the rainwater for your sprinkler system. Don't tell the government I told you that because some states this is illegal. <laughs> um, digital impressions. This, this I love. I love digital impressions. It saves on the stone that has to be thrown away in your office by the lab um, or once you get it back to you. And this also saves on impression material and uh, cartridges as well. A hands-free faucet control. There are several different ways that you can use a hands-free faucet control. Um, there's different, different methods. Usually the one with your feet is the easiest. Um, and they, they also save about 90% of water consumption, even over top of the motion-censored uh, faucet controls. You can encourage patients to use water flossers rather than regular floss. If you sell the water flossers in your office, that's just another way that you can, um, you can upcharge by a few dollars and you can make a little bit more revenue there as well. Metal suctions and metal air water syringes can save you a ton of money. Um, I know there's not a lot of people that like the metal suctions, so they do have a paper suction option as well. You can upgrade your thermostat. Realistically, there's not very many offices that are open much more than 40 hours a week. There's 168 hours in a week. So you are wasting 128 hours to be able to heat your office an extra 20 degrees when you can just lower your temperature at night and on the weekends, and that can save you a ton of money. Energy efficient light bulbs, are fabulous. Same thing with dimmer switches. You don't necessarily always have to have the lights on 100%, especially if you have a lot of natural light, or just turn it off if your operatories have big windows in them. Dual flush toilets. Obviously, this helps to save you water as well. Environmental First Ink is a soy-based ink, and um, rather than using petroleum, they use soy only. And you can send back the cartridges when they're done and they make TVs out of them, which is quite interesting, I think. 
Uh, obviously, you can submit claims online, get paperless EOBs. Greener marketing, I love this one. So you really, I've, I've worked in, in several offices where they stop doing postcards. The patients really don't miss it as much as you think that they're gonna miss it. In addition, if you give them a reminder card, yeah, that's good sometimes, but there are so many text messages and phone calls and emails that they're getting reminded. They really don't need that, especially if they're someone, if they are someone that is high tech, they're just going to put it in their phone. They're going to throw it away as soon as they get home anyways. Um, buy from greener companies. Ecobee is a fabulous company. They have several different products. If you buy a case of gloves from them, They've created a 25 cent um, nature program. So every case that they sell, they donate 25 cents to the American Forest um, tr for Tree Restoration Foundation. And they've already planted over 60,000 trees in the United States. That's fabulous. Smile Co products. She has a, a product called Mouth Pearls. It's all organic, it's all natural. It's a dry mouth solution. All of her packaging is either recyclable or reusable. I mean, her motto is healthy mouth, healthy planet. Can you really go wrong with that? Uh, Reuseit.com, there are so many benefits to reuseit.com. I would really just encourage to, to check out that website. Take a screenshot of this if you can. There's also gonna be um, a little thank you gift at the end and it's gonna have the majority of this on it. Year three of the plan. Marketing towards new patients. You can have ads on Facebook, on Google. Um, you can have a commercial on TV or on the radio. Movie theater billboards have been a big help in our town, actually. Uh, you can tell your patients, for every new patient's that we get, we will plant a tree, which in turn will show the city that you like the city that you're wanting to give back. If you volunteer your time, again, the city sees it, they really do. And once you do something good for the city, they'll do something good back for you. Along with the free dental day, this really drives in new patients. Um, a lot of times free dental day is for patients only with um, for patients only that don't have insurance. So this is a great way to give back to your community. You can take that $10,000, make a better website and improve your SEO, which will obviously bump you back up to the top of Google. Your new patient gifts, you can upgrade them so that they're not those disposable bags and um, plastic, every, plastic water bottles everywhere. Give them a good gift, maybe give them uh, some opalescence whitening or give them a water pick if you um, can get that at a good enough rate or you have enough budget for that. I thank you so much and I really hope that your office can save over $10,000 a year by transitioning to, a, to paperless while going greener. Back All right, to you, Mike. Wendy, thank you so much. Uh, we're going to open the floor for our Q and A's here. So if you have any questions, make sure to top them, type them into the box on the right hand side of the screen. I uh, see we already have a couple. Um, I think this is a question for Wendy. Uh, is it realistic to transition my office in one year, or how long will it take to for an office to go paperless? I definitely recommend to make the transition happen over about six months but it really depends on on your office there are some offices that don't want to scan scan anything in other offices that want to scan the entire chart in which is what i recommend then you don't ever have to go back to that chart you're completely away from that chart realistically it takes about six to eight months from the start to the finish steve it looks like you uh you wanted to jump in here and say something no, no, no. Sorry, I was trying to trying to see if my headset worked. <laughs> okay, well, great. Uh, we've got a, a question for you, though, Steve. Actually, yeah. good, good. <laughs> well, my headset works. We can answer it. All right. So it said that the uh, the that net that net promoter score of one for dentistry seems pretty bad. Uh, I can't believe the dentistry is that bad. Uh, Steve, would you elaborate a little bit on that? Yeah, I think the first thing to realize is that 
the net promoter score is not like your um, college or high school tests where zero represented nothing right. Yeah, um, the scale is minus 100 to plus 100. Yeah, um, so if you had 100% dissatisfied customers, your score would be minus 100. 100% fully satisfied, it would be plus 100. Yeah, um, and the score itself is the difference between those two. So a score of one is average performance. The challenge for dentists and dental practices is that Patient expectations is now being set by best-in-class retailers. So the concierge services at the department stores, the the one-on-one -on -one service that consumers are getting as they go to specialty retailers, um, places where they go. I went. To, I had a, a tire repair recently. I walked into the tire shop. They had cold water available, bottled water available for me, a nice waiting room. It was clean. It was quiet. Um, there were places for me to plug my laptop in. All those things are, are setting expectations for consumer experience. Um, and all of that plays into whether somebody would recommend your practice to someone who's looking for a new dentist. Um, so if you compare someone who last updated their furniture in the 70s and, and doesn't have any amenities in the office when someone comes in, compared to someone that's remodeled and has... Uh, a, nice um, waiting room furniture and, and maybe educational videos playing. Yeah, um, the latter is going to get the recommendation over the former. And that plays into the net promoter score. Fantastic. Uh, we have a, we've got a question here. Uh, sorry, we jumped in a bit late to the webinar, but I, did I hear that EagleSoft is now digital? No, <laughs> sorry. Um, <laughs> Uh, EagleSoft has a few different options so your patient can fill out some forms. So if you get a Topaz signing pad, they can sign just right on your computer for some some in particular um, papers on the computer, not digital. They do have something that just came out. I can't remember the name of it, but they do have one, a new software, not EagleSoft, a, a new one um, that's cloud-based. Yeah, and I'll I'll add on. And I at, earlier I said I promised I wouldn't turn this into a sales pitch. But <laughs> I I do have to take the opportunity to highlight our new um, Revenue L Forms feature does integrate with EagleSoft. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it does provide that ability to set up the patient intake forms, the patient health history, to s give your patients the opportunity to fill those out before they get to the office, um, and to do that electronically. And I'll stop there to avoid it from getting too much of a sales pitch. But <laughs> that one, that one, I, I, as a marketer, I couldn't, um, couldn't um, not let that pass without um, answering. It's always great to get a softball. Uh, <laughs> so, Wendy, this is another question for you, and it, uh, it is: Can I still use route sheets? You can still use route sheets. That means more or less that you're not necessarily a paperless office, but you're a chartless office. Um, Having route sheets is definitely going to increase your cost by a little bit in, throughout the year, but it's not a ton of money. And as long as you're recycling that, that's it, it's OK. That That's a big um, comfort that a lot of people have, and they just really don't want to get rid of route sheets. And that's it's got a lot of information on it. You can still use route sheets until you feel comfortable. So from the start time of transitioning to chartless or paperless, if you have the route sheets for you know an extra year or two years, it's okay, as long as eventually you're gonna get rid of it. <laughs> Fantastic, okay, I think we have uh, one more question here. This one's for Steve. Uh, how does a patient's desire to save time play into this? Yeah, I think that um, that last point that I made um, plays right into the um, right into the notion of um, why we need to go paperless. The user experience associated with saving patients' time. You know, people have more choices, more options to spend their time. You know, people are using time more efficiently than ever. So. You wind up, someone waits for 30 seconds on the elevator, they're pulling out their phone to um, to um, check their email one more time. Um, we now go into a, a situation where we're asking them to 
take that example of downloading a paper form, printing it out on their printer, filling out information, bringing it into the office, stapling, assembling, um, and if they can save time by filling out a form online before they get to the office, having everything set to go, um, maybe having to update one or two pieces of information and doing that with a couple of taps on an iPad instead of being handed a clipboard with a, a, a bunch of paper. Um, all of that is going into saving the um, patient time. If you can eliminate the, oh, please come to, your, come to our office 15 minutes before your appointment to take care of the paperwork, well, nobody likes the paperwork, so give them the option to take care of it earlier, save them that 15 minutes, and um, be able to, to manage things electronically. Saves the um, practice time as well, in terms of information that you can collect online, saves you the trouble of having to transcribe it, um, type the information from paper into the system, deal with disposing the paper appropriately in um, compliance with HIPAA, yeah, um, so there's a lot of time-saving elements that come into play with every paperless element um, of your office. Fantastic, thank you, Steve. Uh, Wendy and Steve, thank you both for your presentations. Uh, and thanks to everybody who tuned in today. Uh, I've got my own little sales pitch here at the end, but uh, if you're not already a Revenue Well customer, consider becoming one. It's incredibly easy to implement. There's only three steps, no monthly contract, and it's only $299 a month. <laughs> if you're curious about becoming a customer, please contact us at info at revenuewell.com. Uh, thank all of you again for joining us, and we will see you again next time.